Hi, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and this is Understanding the Path to College Athletics. We call this our Athletics Masterclass. And it's so important for you to know as far as any type of athletic recruiting, whether it's D1, 2, 3, what's the difference between NAIA or NCAA, it's really important to understand these things before you go launch into the recruiting process. So again, I hope this presentation helps. I just like to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a scholarship coach. I also am a school counselor and I worked for 10 years in public schools before I went out on my own. I've been doing this over 25 plus years and I have team members that also have been within the business. So I am also a certified life coach. I'm a mediator. My research was mentoring at-risk college students. And it's important for you to understand that at-risk with college kids means their freshman year. It has to do with nothing else. It has to do very much to do with the success of that freshman year. And also, I my expertise extends into financial aid and scholarships. I just want you to have a better understanding of the recruiting process so that you don't get caught up with paying a school to actually have you play. And that's what I have found in the past, and that's why I became very, very attentive to the athletes, figuring out what they needed, how it works, so that they have a better success rate in being able to be paid either through scholarships or selecting the right school that will help them. I, that was a picture of me and my children. So a little bit about me. Here's my little story. I was born in 1961, and I was kind of an unexpected arrival. I am a twin, and I'm being held by my father. And they were a little bit surprised. <laughs> I had a lot of energy and a lot of curls. <laughs> and so it was fun in many ways growing up in a large family, and we were of an athletic family, so that was nice too. My first career was in tech ed. I was a barber. I opened up a barber shop and I had a business for 10 years. And I am thankful that I had that opportunity because everything that I learned about owning a business and how I own my business now has helped me. So I do have kids and the kids grew up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for some reason, animals gravitate to me. For whatever reason, if I am anywhere near a stray, it will definitely attract itself to me. So I went to school and then I graduated and then I had to go to school again and get my master's in order to be a school counselor. So according to Forbes magazine, we still have 2.5 million students who have student loan debt that is greater than 100,000, and that is just ridiculous. We have 610,000 students who have student loans greater than 200,000. This is unheard of, and it shouldn't be happening, but this is the reality, and that's why I do what I do, because I fall into this category. So that is why I founded The Coaching Educator, we coach students in the admissions process. We started giving workshops, various workshops. We developed individualized programs. And it's so wonderful because I have the experience of working in public schools and I know what the limitations are and I know how to assist school counselors at school. So it's just a great match. I also work with students helping them to become leaders. And that's important. That is where the scholarships are, whether you're an athlete or not. And the great part is, is athletics are considered leadership. So that's important for you to know. We also work with musicians, whether the, it is going to be their primary degree or if it's a minor or if they're just attending or looking at a school that's interested in having musicians play in their orchestra. We work with athletes and it does not matter what you do or what you're interested in, all athletes we do we work with. We help them get recruited, and we help them get recruited to the best possible schools that will help them fulfill their goals. 
We love to promote the military. And, you know, a lot of people think that the military do not like it when they have athletes, and that's just the opposite. Many, many, many programs, many ROTC programs fully support the athletes. We work with international students as well. Whether you're an athlete or a non-athlete, we also work with them. So we developed, we further developed our programs and we continue, we're going to continue to add. So in 2019, we opened the door to, for our neighbor scholars program. So we provide uh, many students who come to uh, this area, especially, but across the United States, we provide them with the same programs, especially if they have refugee status or they find themselves in a situation where they're, for whatever reason, their parents cannot afford um, to actually help them get to college. So we provide that as well. We also have had really great success with helping students. So I don't want you to fret if you're a first generation. Uh, if English is not your first language and or if you come from a family that that has had some extreme financial issues, please do not worry. So we have really good reviews and you can look at our website, The Coaching Educator. If you look down, there's our link, thecoachingeducator.com. You can find our reviews, except the animals, I'm telling you. Animals really miss their students, so the animals aren't liking us as much. <laughs> so at the beginning of last year, we created a program, um, our first online course, and we are going to be actually having another online course for athletics. So our first one was the College App Boot Camp. So we, ha we do have that online course if you're interested. Again, if you're interested, you can always email us at info at thecoachingeducator.com, and you can get information on that. And if you go through this whole presentation, then we always give a discount because if you are informed, we have to do less work. So we are always open and willing to give discounts to anybody who has done their own practical learning. So we started the, light, the college light bulb. So we have a Facebook page that's private for parents that's uh, called the College Cafe, but we also have a podcast and we're on YouTube, so you can find all of our stuff on YouTube. And if anybody needs any more information or they want us to go over a certain subject, please feel free to, again, put it in the comments and we'll be doing that. So we are very proud of our return on investment. So we have a high percentage. And the big thing about athletes is our athletes fall in the 65 to 85 times for what, what it costs for our programs. And to me, that's great. So all of our students earn scholarships no matter where they go, but athletes especially. So the questions you have to ask yourself as an athlete is, do I have the athletic ability to compete at the college level? So even Division Three can be quite challenging and it's a whole different ball game. So I want you to really be thinking about that. And do I have the desire to compete actually just emotionally, physically? It, it can be exhausting and there's a lot to it as you'll find out. And do I know and do I have the right classes? So if you want to play Division I or Division II, you really need to have certain classes. The NCAA requires certain classes, so it's important that you are taking them. And it's important that any class that you're considering, you make sure you check with your school counselor that that actually qualifies for the NCAA. So what parents are always wondering is, when do we begin? When? You know, when? How do we promote our student athlete? Which it, it has changed significantly, and we'll be going over that. Also, how important is are the sports clinics? Because many people can't afford to go to 15 sports clinics. So I will definitely be covering that. And can our student get an athletic scholarship? So I'm just going to begin to say that less than 2% of athletes get a scholarship. And of those students in the United States, across the United States, who do 
earn a scholarship of some sort, uh, some athletic scholarship, the average is 11,000. So I want you to really put that in perspective. If you are attending a private school that might be more expensive and your scholarship is only $11,000 and you still have quite a bit left, that's something to consider. So NCAA sponsors certain sports, and I just like to show this, and you can look at this and see if your sport is in here. NCAA, here is the list of the NCAA sponsored sports, and you can look in there and find the sport that you're interested in. And here's the rest of the list, and also the emerging ones, the equestrian, the rugby, the triathlon, which is pretty exciting, because I know that a lot of parents do triathlons, and they like to do them with their kids. So NAIA, which we're going to talk about that as well. So this is just another program. And many people really want, they think in their mind they want to play for the NCAA. But the NAIA is another opportunity. And there are schools that this is their program. And so it's important for you to not, I really recommend that you be focused on both just in case so you won't miss out on opportunities. Okay, eligibility centers. I really want you to pay attention to this. Here are your eligibility centers. Here's the contact information. Here is the current cost, and I'm going to let you know that it does go up every year. So I like to see kids as young as sophomore year get into this. Now, you won't be able to fill all the stuff out in there, but, I mean, you can't add your scores. They're, they're not interested in your PSAT scores. They're interested in your ACT or your SAT. And unless you're going to be taking it very early, which I do not recommend you taking it unless you are a very strong student. And if you are, great. But if you aren't, just know that at least you won't have to pay more. And I think that's important. So definitely consider getting in and signing up. It's a one-time fee. And like I said, it changes all the time. So these were the last time I looked, which was pretty recently. These were the this this was the pricing that was listed. As you can see, there's no pricing on the NJCAA, and that's the junior, the junior edition. So for community colleges or junior colleges, that is what they they don't charge. So, but it's worth going in there. They have a lot of good information, and you know, it's really a good way for people to create a situation where, oh, I have some kids that are graduating at 17. I have kids that, you know, it would give them if they went to a JUCO, that it would give them another year to bulk up, get bigger, even hone their skills. I have a lot of girls who will go to a junior college and then be transferred to a four-year college. So it is not a bad opportunity, and oftentimes the junior college has several four-year colleges that are always looking at their students. So just be open when you first start this process. Don't be closed down to the opportunities that may be ahead of you. So there are a maximum number of scholarships per sport that's allowed by the NCAA and the NAIA. And when you look at the numbers, it's pretty small. When the, the overall, you think all of the schools in the United States and there are only 1,362 colleges that have these scholarships. So, and some have, some don't. And so it's important for you to kind of get an idea. So if you think about a million football players at the high school level all competing for these scholarships, that might help you put it in perspective. So here I like to compare the NAIA just for your own, just looking at the amount of money that's in each. And this is why I put this slide up. So you see that, yes, the NCAA Division II has $5.4 million with an average of $17,000, but the NAIA also has quite a bit of money, and, and that's important for you to look. And there's more participation. If you look at the NAIA, there's more participation, that 21.3%. That so I think it's important for you 
to look at. I'm sorry, it's 17% participating. And uh, so I want you to look at the participation levels and the postseason participation rate. You can see that the NAIA has a higher number. Now, one of the things that I like to show you as well is the NAIA has a full disclosure for financial aid, and that's to me key. You need to understand what you're going to be able to receive for scholarships. So I talk a lot about this because it can be very scary, and I really, really feel that it's important for you not to take such a huge amount beyond student loans and beyond what your parents are able and willing to help you out with to create a situation where you really can't afford the college because that puts a lot of stress on the students. So these strategies are going to help you. So here you need to, you know, you need to put a plan in place. And athletes are great at this. You know, you're always planning. There's certain times that you need to set aside and I find that athletes are really great with this. They tend to be really good with what's called executive functioning. They're highly organized. They know they have a short window that they have to study in. So, so these are all the things that are really good to just kind of list. So, you know, what school and what sport and what is your ultimate goal? So if your ultimate goal is to actually become a professional player, clearly your goals, what you're going to be setting, how you're going to organize your life is going to be very, very different than someone who's just really interested in playing at the college level. You know, the other thing is to create an athletic profile. So what is an athletic profile? Well, it's, an, it's, it's your resume. It's your athletic resume. And we will go over that and I will show you an example of that. It's so important for you to understand what to put in that athletic profile. And it really helps coaches when they're looking at certain students. They don't, don't make a coach hunt that, you know, it's already they're getting inundated because of social media. So that, that has changed a lot. And I could say in the, over the last 10 years, what you can do to promote yourself has just created, it's just so much easier than it was previously. The problem is it invites more athletes. So therefore you're competing. And if a coach has to work too hard when they already have a very stressful job, especially within season, it's challenging. So you want to make it as easy as possible by having an athletic resume that will help. So you want to be putting certain things on and we'll go over that in within the next few slides. So nowadays you can do a website which is very simple. We do a really nice website, simple, gives the coach everything they need to do, but you can also do YouTube. And I encourage you to do that. You know, I see it all the time. When I'm visiting some of my students on the field, when I'm looking at what they're doing, I see parents all the time filming. And now it's amazing what our cell phones can do. So it's really important that you take the time, you know, get someone, especially the booster club, they should all be videoing here and there and clipping them together and having a team YouTube because that, that will help out tremendously. Another thing you want to do is you really want to prepare your target schools. So which ones are your target schools? Are they realistic, both academically and athletically? That's important for you to ask yourself, as well as you need to prepare how you're going to speak to someone, how you're going to connect with the coaches. And we have a great slide that's going to come up that's going to talk about that. So you also want to be actively observing the game plays and of your target schools. You have to have a good understanding of the coach, how they play, who they play, and if you are at that level. It's so important to do that. And you want to produce an ed edited videos highlighting. I mean, I can't tell you, you do not want to ever take a video that is just ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. You do not want to do that. It's very, very challenging to edit. It's a nightmare and it's costly. 
So you want to take clips. So whomever is doing the videoing, just do clips. Shut it off. Turn it on. Do clips. No more than that. And you want to be highlighting, especially, you know, you as a team player. So it's not just about you, but how do you function within the team? What are your capabilities and things like that? That's important. So set your goals. You want to really, really nurture a relationship with a coach. And what does that look like? So the right colleges and the right coach you're applying. So, you know, especially if you've already applied and some coaches really request that if they show any interest, they say, we really want you to apply first. And then I can create a situation where I can, you know, look at what I can give you based on the other things you come to the table with. So you really have to know, you have to know how to nurture these relationships. And many of the D1 schools and the D2 schools are very strong academically. So you want to be letting your coach know. You wanna let them know every time you get a better mark on something or you have a higher score, it's perfectly fine and it's actually helpful to them. You also want to get feedback from coaches. So many, many, many kids, they have a summer program or they're on a club team. Take the time to actually ask your coach, not during season, but when you're done with your season, to review some clips and to give you feedback and or to give you feedback just on how you played for that season. It's really important to start gathering this information. Make sure you know your coach's last name. I mean, I've been doing this for years and I'm, I'm still quite surprised <laughs> when students do not know their coach's full name. So it's important for you to, to make sure you do that. And you are going to receive, once you're starting to fill out the forms, and many colleges have their own form as part of the required process, and they'll invite you to fill out that form. So because you filled out that form, you are going to get on their list for marketing their summer programs. And do you need to do it in order to get recruited? No. No, these are just opportunities and if it works for you, it's not gonna hurt because if you are in their summer programs and are in particular, if you're on their campus, you could then create a situation where you are viewing the college, you're usually staying in dorms and that will help you decide ultimately because you do still want to think about as, as an academic program. So you want to make unofficial visits and really make as many as you can. And it's just as easy to call up the coach, not during full season, but other times to call the coach up to ask if you can, if you're making a visit, you do not want to ask them for an official visit that is up to the coach, but you want to say, hey, I am in the area. My parents and I are vacationing in the area. I'm looking at schools in the area. And I would like to do an unofficial visit if I may. And oftentimes they're very open to it and it really looks the same. So students have reported to me that it, it really does look the same. Now, be aware you're not going to be doing this sophomore year. However, junior year, if you've done all your things right and you're really reaching out to coaches and things like that, it's important for you to reach out and request and give them dates and times. So you want to continually update your athletic achievements, which means that if you have made an athletic, an athletic resume, you really, really want to, which we call it an athletic profile, you want to keep updating it. I mean, if you've grown two inches, which happens often, you want to put that. If you've gained weight, that will help you. You want to change that weight. So it's important for you, but always, always make it, when you're making your athletic profile, you want to keep one in Word, and then you want to update it, and you want to make sure you get rid of the old one, and you want the updated one in a PDF, because when you're loading anything up or sending it in an email, it's more, it's better to PDF it so that it can't be changed. So academic achievements are very important. You always want to have your GPA. Even if you're not the best student, you still want to have your GPA. Do not make a coach hunt. 
It's very important that you don't do that. You need to put your GPA on that athletic profile as well as, well as your scores. And your video content, you want to have it good. You want to have some good content that reflects you as a player, highlights some of your stuff, but also shows you working as a team member. So it's three key things. It's not just you. So timelines, you really have to understand the timelines. It will help you a little better. And it's surprising how you know the how important it is and how important it is to stay on track so freshman and sophomore year are really the years where you you just want to make your first year count and i you know i have especially if someone is very talented athletically or is a strong athlete and they are thinking i want to be able to play at the college level i can't tell them enough and i'm so happy when i see eighth graders watching this you need to make a splash, a really good one in your ninth grade year. It is very hard to recover your GPA if you kind of goof around in your ninth grade year. And with all the years that I've been doing this and when I was in public school and obviously I had a much larger pool, I had about 280 to 300 each year students and there was a large population of athletes it is important and I, they used to come in and think well i don't have to have that great grades well you can get recruited by a college that you potentially can't afford so if you make a splash really work hard at getting your gpa and your academics in a great place the magic number is 3.85 a coach will be very very interested in you so you want to do that. So make those years count so you don't fall behind. And you want to select a primary sport, especially if you're going after Division I. If you are able to play at the Division I level, or some Division II is very, very challenging, and you really need to be able to have that first sport because generally they're larger schools and with the larger school they don't want you playing another sport and you might have other duties that they require off season and i you know even with division three which is a great great option people do not understand the value of division three i you know it's important for you they you won't get a an athletic scholarship but you will get either a room and board or a you know some sort of academic scholarship i mean they really really make a strong effort in getting you to play at the college level and and it can be quite fun but when my son was playing at the division three level soccer off season in the spring that was just like almost the same. It, it was really challenging, but it required that amount of time. So it's important for you to be aware of that. You want to register, like I said, in the eligibility centers because they go up every year. So at least if you, you can catch it and before it goes up, that would be great because that's pretty expensive. But it is a one-time fee. And you want to, again, be building your athletic resume. It's important. And don't worry if it feels like it's not as large as other people because coaches are really looking at, are you coachable? Are you coachable? Do you have decent grades? Are you, I, it, you know, if you're a, a decent kid, you're not a troublemaker, you haven't gotten, you know, points against teachers, you're respectful to adults, they love that. And if you have good attendance, they love that. But again, don't, you know, don't create a situation where you're going to school sick either. <laughs> so sophomore year, come sophomore year, you're going to be very proactive, especially in January. You're going to be initiating your recruiting. So it's important for you to understand how to do that. And you're going to be self-evaluating. You need to be able to honestly compare yourself and to be able to speak about yourself compared to your other teammates it's important for you to do that and to understand your level that you're playing at and to be really honest about it athletics you want to look at your how talented you are athletically and where are your academics because coaches really want the safety net of strong students 
you want to look at your major and start thinking about that because some schools you might get recruited to, they may not even have your major or they may not have a, they just may not have a strong department. You want to look at your, potentially your desired location. I had a couple of students who were recruited to Wisconsin. They were really not happy. (laughs) One of them ended up staying, the other one did not because it was just too cold for him. He was not used to that. So he came from very warm weather. So it the seasons were just very challenging for him. So when you're getting recruited and trying to make a decision between the different schools, it would be very important for you to spend the time thinking about, am I someone who can handle the weather or whether it's hot or cold. So we also want to be preparing that athletic profile and cover letters. So part of your cover letter process is actually having a couple of bios. And what I like to see are three different bios. So I like to call it the, this is who I am. And in in your first bio is just describing yourself as that particular athlete in that particular sport and what it means to you. The second bio really, I think, should focus on who you are as a person within your family, within your community, within your school, and especially who you are within that school. So it's important for you to highlight your academics, your interest in learning and things like that. The third little bio, I like to call it the humble beg. I mean, you are basically asking them to consider you to be playing at their college and at the college level. So there's an element where you're describing how important the sport is to you, what you love about the sport, and that it would be pretty much a really great privilege to be, to be recruited for their school. So again, I want to go over that. I want to, I call it that who you are as an athlete, little section. Then the next one is who you are as a community member. And then the third one is that humble beg. So who you're going to be as a college athlete. You want to also produce videos for recruitment. And we actually do a little slide that kind of gives you an idea of the the best recommendations, quick recommendations. Obviously, swimming is different. There are a couple sports that are very, very different. But for the most part, these cover the sports. You also want to begin to be reaching out to coaches, which means that you might have called a coach by the end of it all over 50 times, and that coach, she may not have picked up until the last five. So it's important for you to understand that it's your job, that it's your your interest in their school, And you want to not get discouraged and wonder, why aren't they calling me back? Because they get several phone calls. So you want to be able to stand out, not lose hope, not sound discouraged, and certainly do not have your parents call. (laughs) Okay. So the summer after sophomore year is when it's really heating up. You're generally, for a lot of girls, they, this is where you're going to stop growing. So you really need to prove yourself at this point. You want to look at your status again. How are you playing against other people? Your unofficial visits, your camps. So really be selective with those camps, especially the camps that are that have coaches that attend. And probably the biggest mistake I see is that kids just willy-nilly attend them and they have high hopes of somehow getting connected to that coach. Well, generally you get a list. So make sure you are looking at that list and make sure you are connecting with those coaches and letting them know, this is where I'm playing. This is the court I'm on. This is the game time my team has been given. This is my position. Here's where I'll be. Here's my last name. It will be on the back of my shirt. Here's my number. Here's the color. So I always recommend that people get the same color t-shirt. 
So when even when you're off the field, you want to have the same colored t-shirt with your last name on the lower part of your shirt because most kids carry a bag and it covers their name. So emailing coaches, that is important for you to be doing and you need to keep track. I can't tell you last year we had one student who had, I swear there were five coaches that were all called Butch. And you know, it's important for you. You need to know which school. You need to be clear. You need to be clear about their position and you need to also be respectful if they've asked you to get back to them within the week, you really want to get back to them very quickly. I like to see a 48 hour turnaround. That shows that you care and that you're paying attention. I know it's hard for students because they don't often look at their emails, but coaches many times do that. The challenge is just texting and it, and you know, we have phones that the email comes almost as a text to them and it's a little more organized and orderly. So I like to see emails going back and forth. I think it's important. You also want to log your telephone and email communications. And if you're trying to connect because a coach said, hey, I want you to get a hold of me, give me a call. You need to be calling and you need to be calling about every third day until you reach that person at different times of the day. So it's important to, to do that. Okay, junior year. Obviously, this is the big recruiting year. A lot of kids start getting noticed. It's important for you to be continuing with all the activities. Make sure that every single portal, your huddle account, whatever accounts that you have, they're free, which is helpful and useful, but you need to fill them out and you need to have a headshot and the headshot needs to be very clear so that that person sees you because they see a lot of students and believe it or not, everybody starts looking alike. It is important. It's important for you to be filling it out properly. Get your bio into these things, especially with Huddle, that bio on that first page is that first one that I talked to you about. You want to update your videos. If you went to a summer camp or a clinic or anything, you want to be able to update your videos. I even had a student where we actually updated his routine that he used for, um, for strength training. And it was really good. And the coaches liked that. It showed discipline. You want to work with colleges to develop a personalized, you know, you really want to be more personal with the coaches. And I'm not talking not being respectful. Always be showing a great amount of respect for the coach. You want to, even if you're texting, you want to remember you are, you are texting someone in a very strong leadership and authority position and you need to show respect. You want the official transcripts, the scores in the eligibility centers. Many students don't realize that they don't have their school counselor send their transcript to the eligibility center or your, uh, the person who takes care of transcripts in your school. If you don't have them do that, it, you can't file and load it up. Many students think they can do it on their own. You actually have to have them do it. But if you registered in your sophomore year and you put your transcript in, you have to remember that every semester, especially if your grades have gone up, don't feel free to request that the transcript be updated. It's important for you to do that. And don't get discouraged. Be proactive and determined and just keep thinking about all the kids across the United States. So oftentimes it's the one that's the most persistent that will get through to the coach. But just make sure that you get good at paying attention. You know, don't be in a huge crowd. And another thing that I like is if you have received a message from the coach, make sure you put their name and everything into your phone so that when they call, you are aware of which coach is calling. So all of our phones, you can get that first and last name of the coach and the school that they're at under the company. Go ahead and do that to help you be more orderly. The more organized 
the easier you make it for a coach, they will be very interested in that. And that shows a discipline that they like to see. Kids who can be disciplined in high school tend to continue that through college. Summer of your junior year is a really busy year, especially for athletically talented kids. It's so, so important for you, though, to be really looking at the athletic programs and studying the rosters and looking at their statistics and watching them play. You have to be aware of this, and you have to see the level. And, and you have to look at students who have been recruited previously and see when they were recruited because if your position the, the previous year or the year you're a senior, they re, that particular team recruited four people that do what you do, that is probably not a school that you're going to be recruited for. You want to focus on the ones that maybe didn't recruit so many people within your position that year. So it's important for you to be doing this and to be able to speak when you're communicating back and forth with the coaches just to be able to reference games. That's important for you to reference. So you want to also make those unofficial visits really be strategic. I am a junior. Your college is one of the ones I'm interested in. I have filled out the form for recruitment. Here is, I have applied to the school or I'm considering applying to the school. Those are the kinds of things that you want to express an interest. I would really appreciate being able to come for an unofficial visit. You also want to be able to spend the summer strength training. I can't tell you. It prevents injuries. It helps you to be more explosive. It's crazy the level that you need to be at, and they like to see that you're independent in that as well. Not only are you doing what your coach is asking you to do, you're doing beyond. You are showing initiative, because that what ha that is what has to happen at the college level. You also wanna update the coach academically. So when you've finished your semester, the before summer, you really want to be sending that unofficial transcript attached to an email and really show them how, you know, what you're doing. And you might even want to give them another message that tells them what courses you're planning to take in senior year. So seniors on track, that just means that from a very early age, all through high school, you've decided you wanted to be re recruited. You've done everything you can that I have listed within the timeline and you want to be recruited. So you really now are focusing down on that select group of schools. You may have had 40 in your sites previously and now you're narrowing it down to ones that are more realistic. A lot of students find that they are, you know, by senior year, they really don't want to go that far away. Or there are several opportunities that are one plane right away and that's really appealing. Or if you're close enough to drive home and part of that is your parents can come see you which is a lovely thing that's really fun to have your parents see you play at the college level so you're starting to really narrow down who you are applying to and making sure that you have done this over the summer because if you are a fall sport that is so hard to be doing all of this as well as the applications you know, you have those unicorns. You have those people who are already committed. They've been identified. They've talked to the coaches. They're just amazingly talented students. But for the most part, the rest of the student athletes really have to work at the recruiting process. So you want to continue to do that research and, and maintain that communication. Like I said, 48 hours. And don't be afraid to let a coach know, I, we're going on a summer trip or I'll be attending these clinics, things like that. You have to remember that coaches oftentimes are very connected and know each other. They may have someone that they want to kind of look up at you, check you out, and get back to them. So, and or, I have had some students who the coach, if they had the position open to recruit, really would like to see them, but they refer them to another coach. So always be open, always be open. So review your offers. So some offers might be coming in. Please wait until you see financial aid. 
please wait. It is important to request that, that you'd like, you, you know, before you give any answer other than I'm really interested, this is a college I would love to play at, just because a coach promises you a certain amount of money until you see it in writing with a signature with on the letterhead of the school, I am begging you to not move forward. Do not until you know exactly what your financial aid package is because it is really disappointing when you get the excitement of getting that recruitment. You get excited about signing and many kids have signed and then they realize that there is no way they can even attend the school. You also want to make sure at the end of senior year that you make the effort, and it's super busy, but you've got to make the effort to get that final transcript into the eligibility centers. It is important. That is a requirement. You could get redshirted. So then you have, and this happens all the time, this happens every year where I have seniors who never even thought of playing, and all of a sudden they may have grown into their sport and realized, I want to continue playing their sport, this sport. And they want to start the recruitment process. And I want you to never say never. Be open. You just have to be very, very disciplined and know exactly what you need to do and not waste time. So you just get very focused, very dedicated, and you really push and create that situation where you are really laying out your schedule week by week in order to catch up. So I keep talking about this athletic profile. I talk about what needs to be, how do you, to promote yourself. So this is the section that I actually do that in. So we at The Coaching Educator, we like to see our students have athletic portfolios and we start them as soon as the athlete comes to us. So what does that mean? What does a well-rounded transcript mean? A well-rounded transcript is that you are following what is recommended by the NCAA and the NAIA. And really, if you do those four Englishes, four maths, four sciences, four social studies, languages if they're required by that particular school, and make sure that you check those things, it's important then you're gonna be pretty well set. So don't panic, but really have a very good, well-rounded, even if you're not, my son was not uh, in the upper part of the class. He, he liked school, but we just made sure he had a very well-rounded transcript and that was, that was very well received. That personal statement and bios that I talked about, remember, you're gonna do that initial bio that is short and sweet, you and that particular sport. The second one is you and your communities. The third one is the humble beg. So then you're, you're gonna want to also have an academic resume because many schools will give you more money academically than they will athletically. And if it's a division three, they absolutely are gonna lean more towards that. Your testimonials, you should have gathered three to five sentences, the coach's name, and keep track of that and collect them. And don't be afraid to ask coaches. Generally, a lot of coaches played at the college level. They enjoyed it. They're coaching now. They want to prep you for that. So they're really open to this. So please don't feel badly about doing that. You also want to register with the uh, video websites like Huddle or NCSA. Remember, though, you do not have to do anything but the free site. It's so important for you to do that because, frankly, it's super expensive. And, and I, I just think that you can get a lot of your information in just within the free stuff and using a YouTube or, or creating your own website separate from those. And you want to begin gathering footage for your promotional videos. And the key to this as well is coaches want to receive emails and communications from you. They don't want you hiring. Our company does not send out emails randomly to random schools. We're very strategic in matching you. And we encourage you and help you and help you get organized but it's really, really up to you and the coaches really wanna see that. 
So here's some quick tips for videoing. And I want you to just kind of take a gander at that. You know, you want to make sure that if you're doing a certain sport, you don't want the sun in, you know, in your eyes, you want it on your back, you want to make sure the biggest mistake I've seen people make, especially with baseball, you know, taking a picture of the, they focus their camera, they think they're seeing their child play or at softball, and they end up, the, the camera focuses on the fence itself and you see everything else blurry. So it's important for you to understand and, you know, be respectful of others. And, you know, I encourage parents to swap out, take different angles. Don't just turn your video on. Don't just turn it on and film the whole game. You, It's just so hard and it's expensive. When we have to do that kind of video editing, it is much more expensive than clips. So it's important, and here's your little tips and tricks, you know, ground level for volleyball, behind your team, slightly elevated camera if you can, you know, get it up uh, seven inches higher. If possible, avoid being in front of spectators. That's really, you know, challenging to just select a spot. You know, ground level for basketball, same as bleachers. Bleachers for basketball and volleyball are pretty much midway up to the right of the net or center court. That's helpful for basketball. You know, baseball and softball, sun behind your back, which means you may have to be on the other side of the team, the, the wrong team side. Just try to not be, you know, hooting and hollering for their team. <laughs> Ideally, behind the home plate is excellent. Um, you know, that would be really good if no spectators are behind you. And depending upon your position of the featured athlete, you may want to shoot some footage from you know, down first base or third baseline, things like that with uh, softball or baseball. And football, soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, sun at your back or overhead or too far right or left, you know, you don't want, you kind of want to avoid some of that. Just, you know, position yourself as best you can. You want to have that top row if all rows are filled, if you can, you know, your camera on a tripod standing behind them, that's the best situation that would be good. If it's at ground level, 40 yards from the line is helpful. If you move away, then situate yourself, you know. And honestly, if you want more tips and tricks, then you can certainly down below, you know, we have Nias, who's our media technologist, who is fabulous. You just say, hey, Nias, I need some help on this, or info at thecoachingeducator.com. Ask us any questions, and we'll get back to you with as much as our experience has lent us. Now, do understand that we, in particular, are located in Boise, Idaho, so it is desert, very few clouds, so it might be a little different in your area, but we're used to that, so don't worry. Please feel free to go ahead and info at thecoachingeducator.com and email us. So what is your website? What should it contain? Well, it needs to contain everything that the coach wants. Don't make it hard for the coach. So it has to have your bios and different areas of the website, your testimonials from coaches, which I've talked to you in those timelines about gathering, your transcript. This can be an unofficial one. You just load it up. Please make sure some schools, and I'm still shocked by it, and I really ask parents to take care of that and ask the school to not do this. Some schools still put the social security number on a transcript. You need to make sure that that transcript does not have a social security. I, I'm always finding at least one transcript a year with that still happening. Please make sure that your school and talk to them about that because that is just a great way for people to steal someone's identity. You also want to have that about me and your photos, different photos, action photos, family photos, and your videos. So we always like everything. And you know, I just want you to look at how great this looks. And 
this goes into the hand of a coach. And this is why we started developing and doing our own websites because we found and we have high ratings from coaches. They just love our websites. They can look at everything they need to look at. We've attached transcripts. We've shown the student's family. So if you want more about our what we're doing with our websites and how fabulously they are accepted, please, please, you know, get a hold of us, sign up for a free consultation, and put in the notes, I'd like an athletic consultation. And that will be good. So where can you sign up? For